Hi, this is Ishinru for Life. My previous videos were 20 or 30 minute workout sessions. Today I'd like to depart from that somewhat and explain Ishinru form, function, and flow of power. Ishinru karate is a big world. There are many fine instructors and practitioners and a variety of interpretations. My perspective is one of several. Much of what I've learned about Ishinu Karate came from my sensei, the late Hanshi William H. Dizzle. He was taught directly by Soke Tatsuo Shimabuku. He learned the basics of chart one and two. He was taught the eight empty hand kata, three bow kata, two sai kata, and a variety of kabite techniques. He spent a lifetime devoted to the practice of Ishinu Karate and became the first person to reach the level of 10th dawn in the Ishinru World Karate Association, headquartered in Okinawa, Japan, and presided over by Osensei Kichiro Shimabuku. I was fortunate and I'm grateful to him for having passed on his knowledge and his traditions to me and his other students, and I'd like to pass them forward to you. The first thing I'd like to address is form. Form can be defined as a unique body position designed to accomplish your martial intent. Be it avoiding or evading, deflecting, blocking, striking, or kicking. Form is established by our skeletal alignment and it's enabled by our muscle system. Although Ishinru adopts a natural posture, feet shoulder width, knees slightly bent, and back straight, our form is well defined and specific. It's not far reaching, we don't overextend, our stances are shallow, not too long and not too deep. Ishinru is made for quick mobility coupled with a firm power base. The issue of form is built along a vertical center line and a horizontal center line. Where these two lines intersect lies our tanden, our center. This is where upper body and lower body unite, and this is the area from which we direct our flow of power. When you wrap your belt around your waist and tie your knot, place the knot just a few inches below your navel. This identifies your tanden center. With attention to our posture and awareness of our tendon, we'll always be in a position of balance and stability. Now, Ishinru employs a variety of stances. Probably the most common is the Saison stance. One foot is ahead of the other, feet are shoulder width apart. The heel of the front foot and the toe of the rear foot are on the same line. This is a shallow stance. Feet are flat, toes pointed straight ahead, knees are slightly bent, back straight. If you want to get an idea of how far to bend your knees, you can try this little demonstration with a bow. And I have one here. Using a bow as a straight edge, assume your safe on stance, place the end of the bow right in front of your toe, bend your knee until it touches the bow. I have the bow vertical. It's a slight bend of the knee. Knees over the toes. That's all the farther you need to bend your knee. If you want to check your vertical posture, hold the bow beside you. This is your vertical posture. My sensei showed me a simple exercise that illustrates the relationship between the various stances that we practice in Ishinu Karate. From a Seisan stance, if you want to assume a Seiyujin stance, simply pivot on the heel of your rear foot by turning it 90 degrees, center your weight, and you are in a Seiyujin stance on this angle. Center, 
this knee stays. Pivot, center, knees are over the toes. Say you can stand. Say it's on. If you want to assume it's on chin stance, pivot on the heel of the front foot by turning it 45 degrees inward. Make sure that your hips and shoulders are square to the front. Bend your knees slightly. Son chin stance. Say son. Son chin. From son chin, I can assume an I hanchi stance simply by turning my hips, torso, about 15 degrees off to the right. I still have my 50 50 weight distribution. I'm in I hanchi stance facing in this direction. Son chin, nine hanchi. Say song. If I want to assume a side say song stance, I simply have to turn my attention and my head about 15 degrees off of the front foot. Side say song. This is a shortened version of a zenkutsu. Say song, side say song. Let me give you a different perspective. If I'm in Saison stance, facing off of this 15 degree angle, toes, hips, shoulders, pointing in that direction, and I just shift my attention to the front, I'm inside Saison stance. Saison, side Saison. This is a good defensive posture. It's a good fighting position. My upper body is turned away from the front. My hands are ready for protection. And I still have my heel toe alignment. I can still use that rear foot. The key point among these stances in this exercise is that the distance between my heels remains the same, shoulder width. Say son, say yujin. Son chin, nai han chin. Side say son. This kind of illustrates the natural positioning of Ishinu Karate. Now, our form is beginning to take shape. And we have our Vertical center, our horizontal center, good posture, awareness of our tanden, and established our stance. The form also dictates our hand position. Take the issue of punch. Chamber extends forward to the solar plexus of someone my own height. Okay. Forearm rubs a rib cage, and I reach my focus point, my stock limit. I don't lock my elbow out where it can be attacked and manipulated, and I don't disjoint my shoulder trying to extend too far or can be pulled off balance. My muscles stop my punch at the same spot each time. Now I use a vertical fist. Ishinru uh, is uh, Known for the vertical fist punch, although other karate styles use it, the unique thing about Ishinru is that it caps the thumb on the top okay, and pulls it back. This accentuates this tendon in the wrist here behind the thumb to strengthen and reinforce the wrist. The vertical fist also establishes a natural alignment of the bicep and the tricep. Okay, so, they extend and contract on a natural line. My elbow is pointed to the ground. I'm striking with the top two knuckles. And I reach my stop limit, my form. <laughs> An uppercut, uh, let's take a look at that for a moment. Say so on stance, chamber, 
Forearm rubs the rib cage, the hand comes straight up toward the chin and penetrates the chin level by about two inches. I reach my stop limit, my focus point. This is a straight line attack. It doesn't loop back and I don't overextend. I focus my limit. My muscles stop this technique from continuing on to infinity. The other thing is, with this technique, I have center line protection. My elbow is behind the fist in front of the solar plexus. In Ishinru chart one and two, in Ishinru kata, there is no straight punch attack to the face. It's not to say that we can't do it or we don't do it. It's not contained in the Ishinru basics or in the Ishinru kata. Now blocks work similarly. I do a lower block, I chamber, the hand clears the area, stops just in front of my thigh, at the edge of the body. I don't need to go any further. Clear the area, the technique passes me by. My hand is about one fist distance from my thigh. I don't need to reach down, I don't need to reach out. Middle side block, chamber, hand clears the area, I stop right at the edge of my body, a technique will pass me by. Okay. My elbow is about a fist distance from my rib cage, my hand even with the top of my shoulder. This is my form, this is my stop limit, my focus point. Sweep block, chamber, the hand comes up, arcing, knuckle the thumbs right between the eyes and just above the eyes, the edge of the hand to flex the technique over my head, my stop limit, my focus point. My hand is about a fist distance from my head and just above, so the technique goes over my head, this is too high, this is too far out. You have to be specific. I'll have specific points that I want to reach. Okay. This helps develop containment. The idea that there's a stop limit on my strikes, a stop limit on my blocks, even with my kicks, Ishinru kicks, generally start from a protective chamber position, knee high, foot beside the supporting knee, Okay, and I extend, 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 and extend. I have an effective range. I have a stop limit with my techniques. This is all establishing the form of Ishinu Karate. I'm establishing my presence. Okay. I have containment. Now, let's take a look in a moment how the form contributes to the function of Vishnu Karate. I have my vertical horizontal center and I have my good posture. Now I can begin to uh, examine concepts of offense and defense, identify weapons and targets, establish focus points. One of the first things that we want to do is avoid an attack. And I can do that simply by stepping back. It's a short step. Remove myself from the attack. I can do that by shifting my weight, stepping off on an angle. And so I avoid an attack, I can block an attack, step back, 
Bop. Shift my weight. Bop. Step on an angle. Bop. Uh, if an attack continues, I can counter strike. Step back, block, strike. Shift my weight, block, strike. Step off, block, strike. All these movements are enabled by my form, my good posture, my balance, my stability the stop limits of my block and my strike. They help uh, establish efficiency, economy of force, flow of power. Now, <clears throat> there is a mechanical sequence to in initiate, to institute, that will help direct my flow of power. So, from a Saison stance, once I have the intent of what I want to do, I want to activate this mechanical sequence. And I can do that beginning at the ground level with my feet. I want to energize my feet. My sensei says it's like plugging in to the earth. Okay? And I energize my body when I plug my feet into the earth. Okay. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to lift my pelvis. I plug in and lift my pelvis. Okay. What this begins to do is lock in my lower body at my tanden area. At the same time, it begins to tighten my abdomen Okay. And I couple that with my exhalation, feet, pelvis, breath. So I'm compressing from the top down, from the bottom up, meeting in the time then, and I can begin the sequence of directing my flow of power. If it's a punch, Now, the reason I had the punch last, the technique last, is because this hand moves very fast. And I don't want to get the cart before the horse. Okay? It takes a few moments, feet, pelvis, breath. This hand will catch up fast. So, I have established my form, my posture, my stance, my stop limits or focus points of my blocks, my strikes, my kicks. I enact the mechanical sequence to direct the flow of power to a specific point for just an instant of time. This takes practice. This takes uh, mindful repetitions to enact this sequence. Okay? You don't need to go too fast, but you want the muscles to support the technique. I have feet, legs, pelvis, torso, back, chest, lats, trapezius. All this supports my technique. Because of our shallow stance, because of our short techniques, we want to be able to incorporate all of our 600 muscles to support our technique. You have to be specific. Now, a sensei gave us a formula. Form plus speed equals power. Now, you've got to think about that for a minute. Form plus speed equals power. The form enables us to relax, and relaxation facilitates speed. 
I developed these good habits. I developed the muscle memory, the conscious reflex. Okay? Between here and here, my end point, you know, I'm pretty relaxed. I'm starting to initiate that uh, sequence, that mechanical sequence. But by the time I reach here, I'm focused. Now many of these concepts are explored in greater detail further down the line when we get to San Chin Kata. But I want to develop this core uh, of Ishinu Karate. And as I progress, as I learn additional techniques uh, through my Kata, I learn additional concepts, different principles. Uh, I apply them layer after layer, details, nuance, that all contribute to my uh, effectiveness, but I want to, uh, I need that solid core on which to build them. So I want to develop knockout power. Okay? This is, uh, this initiates the road to accomplishing that, that uh, ability. Okay? This form, demands precision. The precision demands discipline and concentration. We have to be specific. Our reward is efficiency, economy of force, effective technique and effective flow of power. I can use the unifying properties of my body, my mind and my spirit to execute my Ishinu Karate whether I'm doing it for self-defense, for my health, or to embrace the art as a way uh, to help guide me through life. The form is the structure that enables all these uh, things to happen successfully. I think this is uh, a basic definition of Ishinu Karate. So, I would encourage you to do the repetitions, the mindful repetitions. Okay? Don't put the cart before the horse. Develop the form, centers, tanden, stance, okay? the mechanical sequence and the flow of power. This is something that we continue to work on through our entire karate journey. We can build, we can grow, we can improve, and we can enjoy our practice. So thanks for tuning in. I'll be back with another video sh soon. Uh, hope you'll check that out. In the meantime, work, practice, enjoy. Thank you.